What is up, everybody? Welcoming you into episode 15 of the USFL podcast. Zach Kyleman sitting in hosting this week with my good friend, my good pal, my tired co host, it seems, as we have been in a whirlwind. Just the ref here has been in. Uh, how, how you doing? Um, can, do you want to describe part of your Dude, week for us? It's been um, fun. It's been wild. It's been crazy. But I've been all over the map and we're just be- getting beginning. Getting started, if you will. So it was it Monday night. I learned from my wife. She was having car troubles in El Paso. We live in the Houston area. So as okay. as a husband would do, first thing I did, book a flight to El Paso. We got that so- sorted in the morning and then continued on an 11 and a half hour drive straight through. Straight through. Got home at about one in the morning. Uh, I guess Wednesday morning, Tuesday wow. night. And I mean, we're, we have day jobs, Zach. We're not big baller millionaires just yet. So, I mean, I have a right. day job. Now we're recording this, but in the middle, in between mother nature, mother nature came calling, came coming by. And it looks like there might be some rain Saturday. Now the good news is the forecast is changing a little bit. So it looks like it is going to let up for game time. That was my big worry is. Please don't Mm -hmm. affect the game. Don't impact the game. But one thing that it really looked like it was increasingly going to impact was our party in the parking lot. Right. But as I mentioned on social media, Zach, two sleeps, both full of tricks. You, you were there for the whirlwind. Tron was there for the whirlwind. You guys were giving me your best (laughs) emotional support. And I called everybody, Zach, you were calling people. We were calling Mm-hmm. Everybody we could just to make sure we have a backup plan Oy just bae. in case the thunderstorms come. And it looks like we made a wise choice doing it because it looks like thunderstorms are coming. But fret not, folks. Fret not. The party is no longer in the parking lot, but the party is now in the pub. Todd yes. English Pub. And here's the good news, folks. It's just right across the street from Protective inside the Westin. Let me put my pinky in the air, Zach. We're hosting a show at the Westin. They're going to see me and instantly regret it, but they are going to love it once we're about 10 minutes in. You're going to go scout out on Friday. Like, what have we done? (laughs) I'm showing up to the venue the day before in the ref shirt just so they know who they're talking to. I'm bringing the Springstock banner. I might wear it like a cape. But either way, the party's now in the pub, Todd English Pub, right across the street from Protective. The hours are still the same, though, 12 p.m. Central to 4 p.m. Central. And as you know, Zach, you can also watch it on YouTube. But we got a whole boatload of guests. See, I, I'm stealing the thunder here with my week. So I'm going to. Well, hey, well, what's the thing? I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one back from you because here's the deal. You know that guest list for the tailgate? It's the same one. These people are still coming to the, to the party in the pub is what we're going to be calling it now. Spring stock still is existing at Todd English pub instead of at the tailgate at the green lot. But we got the same people, Ron Frederick, for, former receiver for the former original Birmingham stallions, Roy S Johnson from Alabama.com. One of the main media guys that was on the scene to kick things off on USFL coverage. Tron Hawkins of this is the USFL podcast. One of our My good dude. friends, the folks at Yes, exactly. One of the folks at the the folks at the USFL show who have quite a surprise in store that we've been uh, preparing for in a few ways. In a few ways, just going to leave it out there. Uh, the end zone, who, as you may know, great YouTuber, great journalist in terms of digging on these Alton Spring leagues going to be getting kind of a face reveal. It sounds right. like when he's going to be at that, at the show, Jim Mernier is going to be at the show one way or another. We, uh, we're still working on details, but he will be on in some capacity. And we will have Tom Abraham from ESPN 97, seven FM, who they are still helping us out with this whole broadcast as well. We got it. We can't owe him enough. Thanks for being there. And to add things on top of it, we're also going to try and get Royal retros set up it, with it our guys. It should be good. I, no, I, I spoke with him earlier. I let him know the venue change. Um, so the one thing, and this is, I just need to check with the venue, make sure there's a spot that we can set up merch, but it, it sounds like, it sounds like you may be able to cop some retro Royals merchandise at the show. Now as well at Springstock, you can, you, we're going to have that, but we're also going to have giveaways. Now our yeah. dude, Royal retros hooked us up. He gave us 
that LA Express jersey to give away. We have three of the original USFL team hats to give away. I believe it's the Breakers, right. the Bandits, and the Stars. I have everything packed, yes. so I, I apologize. You nailed them. Those they're all three on the on Perfect. the Perfect. And you know what? We might yeah. have a spring stock shirt to throw in there as well. And don't forget, oh, I packed them. But the USFL podcast <laughs> trading cards. We're gonna have those, and those are absolutely right. free. And I heard there might be some other goody giveaways there as well. And now, again, that it's at a pub, there is very easy access to your beverages of choice. It's not mm-hmm. included. We can't pay for it, but they will right. be available. There's, and I'll tell you this, Zach, I looked at their food, and it looks pretty damn good. They got, I can't tell exactly what it is. I was showing my wife earlier. It's either a weirdly cut hot dog or a pretzel on a hot dog bun. I'm, <laughs> I'm about <laughs> to find out tomorrow, or at least today when this comes out, once I land well, in well, Beham. Look, look, they're a pub. I've seen they, their bangers and mash looks pretty good. Uh, I'm probably eyeing myself up to get that, or maybe some. Uh, let's say there, maybe some shepherd's pie. I don't know. There's Ooh. a few treats I'd be looking for if I'm there. Shepherd's so, uh, pie. Now that's one yeah. I haven't had in quite a while. Now you're getting. Oof, I might have to go double hey, duty on this. It's a pub, yeah. man. Th- think think English pub yeah. food. That's all I'm getting I can tell signed you. up on that. You know, good beer. That's the very least. You're gonna get at least good beer. And I won't be drinking. <laughs> I'll be drinking Bud Light. I'm a horrible person. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Oh, I have man. a problem. Uh, That's my drinking problem is I drink bad beer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're getting off well, topic here. Well, yeah, I was going to say it, it should be a blast here. Uh, looking forward to getting there. And guys, if you're in the area and if you signed up on one of our event lists, that is online about being at the tailgate, trust me, still come on out. We just changed the, the event area that we're going to, and we'll be pumping it like crazy over the next two and spread days the word. you know where we're spread at. Spread the word. Yeah, spread the if word If you know too. somebody that was planning on coming to Springstock, just let them know. They might not have seen the alert. Like I said, we're going to be going overtime, letting everybody know over the next day by the time that this comes out. Oh, my God, isn't that crazy, Zach? I know. <laughs> isn't that crazy to say we're when this comes out, we're one day away from when the USFL kicks off. We get to meet in person. You'll get to meet Tron. I get to meet, uh, see him, but meet his family for the first time. Mm-hmm. We're, I mean, all of the other folks that are coming in, the USFL show, all of these guys, we are a community. And that's what I love about the USFL is we, we, we do have a really fun type. You know who we forgot to mention? Jake Henry. Jake Henry's going to be there. You're absolutely right. I totally spaced because he was so last yeah. minute. Um, yes, he will also be there too. Uh, which if, I mean, you guys follow him along. He's great at getting scoops for some news pieces. He's part of our newsroom family. Uh, he's coming down from St. Louis. He's been looking forward to this man. So he'll be there too. Uh, totally spaced on that. Sorry, Jake, if you're listening in, I did, we didn't mean that, but yeah. Um, it, it, it's been, it's a been crazy. Like, that's why we say my brain this. hasn't turned it's back on since the venue change. My, I, that, I, that gave me a heart attack at a young too young age i'll tell you that much but mm-hmm. it's sorted remember zach i told i put it in the chat i don't know how much i believed it the answer is always yes and tron god bless his soul he said the ref you're the best at what you do and what did i say zach we're about to find out <laughs> <laughs> we're about to find out and you know what the title still holds true i'm i'm uh, I'm still amazed we made it happen. I don't want to go on about it too much longer, but whew, we can breathe. It's easier almost now. almost the finish line. We're almost the finish line. Less than two twenty. Less than forty eight hours away. That that's all I can give you Good right times. there. Less than forty eight hours away. And I'm going to do the segue this week because of the fact we're doing it's Easter weekend that we're going to be celebrating the USFL's version essentially of the NFL's. Thanksgiving, that's kind of what's been hyped up as. This has been exactly what they're trying to put it together as. We've talked from the beginning that Easter weekend, I think that might just be the target moving forward in years to come. You associate Easter with football, mm-hmm. starting with this league now, and Fox is doing that. And I'll tell you what, they did. It looks like they've done a little thing for some broadcast, but it's a lot of 
they've been putting a lot of goodies towards their broadcast affiliates with in terms of Fox. Like they want their local news down there in terms of Birmingham. They're giving local news we- affiliates for NBC and Fox um, plenty of access to do these games. They've been sending out goodies to local Fox affiliates at the very least about stuff. And one of these things, funny enough, came to my Fox affiliate. If you don't know, I work for a company that runs a Fox station out of the building I'm at. Um, Next Star Broadcasting, I'll, I'll admit, that's where I work for. Um, WXIN Indianapolis is the station in my building. So I peruse the halls to, you know, take a break from my, from a, my job every once in a while. And sure enough, at the mail desk, what do I find one day? I find a big old Fox USFL box has the inaugural logo on it, has the Fox Sports logo on it, and I freeze, <laughs> dead freeze. I, I'm getting I'm getting into a little anecdote, so I'll just keep going here. I, I dead freeze, I, I do my thing, take a photo, photo blows up slightly in our community, and I make my and I make our station's news director essentially reveal what we're doing. Really cool gift. It's a it's a football Easter egg. Like a mimicked, mm. you'll see it on this. We'll put it on the screen right. for you. It's a, you'll see it. It's a football Easter egg with US football. And inside it, you have essentially little Russian nesting doll eggs of all eight football teams. In those eggs, M&Ms. Kind of a nice little little thing. It made a little bit of a social media buzz. I don't think they were, I don't think Fox was expecting mm-hmm. it, but it's kind of a cool nod. I, I guess it, it just adds to like, they want to pump this locally as much as possible. Their affiliates, they want their affiliates to know this is content on your station. Right. So here's a little treat. Exactly right. I mean, you got to grease the palm a little bit. I have no problem with that. I love the I love the marketing aspect of it though because again, like you mentioned, this is their version of NFL's Thanksgiving. We have Easter kickoff. What a better way to do it. Here's an Easter themed uh like it was a big Easter basket that that football yeah. was in, right? It was that that box I think was that box I'll be honest was bigger was way bigger than the Easter mm-hmm. basket was. But like, still, I like, got to keep that package with care. They did a great job of presentation on it. Like, you know, they wanted to show it off. You know, it's, it's an office piece for people. That's what I'm that so is. I'm so glad that we got the reveal. Honestly, if it wasn't for you, Zach, if you weren't on the scene to get the initial picture, we may have never seen that reveal. We got an insight into this. You're, you're, you know, you're like a little Sherlock Holmes over there, scouting the hallways, magnifying glass <laughs> out. What is this? You know, if I if I didn't have to step aside for a restroom and getting a Pepsi, <laughs> I would have never seen that, that come up. But I am so glad that I was able to snatch a photo of that. It's just a, like I said, I like little nods and like little th- nuggets mm. like that. You know, it like I said, it made it maybe think straight back because people are like, "Isn't this seem familiar?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, the XFL 2.0 did the turkey right. balls, which you know, credit that wasn't that was because that was during Thanksgiving they did that, but like." That's the closest thing I can think of is that similar advertising in terms of like holiday or festivities type of stuff, except this one directly involved, right. you know, I think, and I, you know, I want to ask you here because might as well, cause I think some viewers have been wondering it is we're on Easter weekend now, whether pending or whatever you want to talk, cause we know mm-hmm. there's rain. All right. We just said about spring stock rains, making us change plans. Thunderstorms actually making us change plans. Got to right. add on to that. Um, Easter being in a, a added piece on Sunday with festivities. Mm-hmm. How do you think the triple header is going to go then? As far as attendance? I guess that's the only question. Like viewership, I think, because viewership to me, it's easy with Easter. You're mm-hmm. going home. You're at your house, just like how we talk Thanksgiving, right. other holidays. I'm curious about how many people come to the stadium, even with the $10 ticket. I think, now. well, here's, here's my take. Um, I think you'll probably, well, it, it's hard to say. My, my initial guess would say uh, you'll probably see more people at the earliest game. But you got to remember Easter Sunday church, right? Mm-hmm. So I That's think right. that might play a little bit into it. So you're also in the exactly Bible. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. And now, so what I could see is that middle game being the most attended. I think the later game might be too late. I know some people will have Monday off from the day after the holiday, but realistically, mm-hmm. I think that the, the late game on Sunday starts at 8 p.m. That might be a little late for yeah. most. But I think that middle game will probably be the sweet spot. And keep in mind, one ticket for the whole game. So you'll probably, you might see people show up midway through the first game, stay for the second game, and maybe catch the first quarter of that third game. And, and of course, you know, here's the real deal, Zach. You're going to have some diehards in there that are going to be there for all three games. Beginning to oh, end. Of course. Right. From, of course. It's a football, it's one of the football capitals of the U.S. is right. Alabama. So it's part of the reason why they but chose But I, I think... You know, 
it might not be the greatest answer, but I think it'll kind of ride that wave. Probably maybe around halftime of that first game, probably start seeing more people trickle in. Because, I mean, realistically, okay, we're going to go to church. Let's go check out a football game. And then we're going to go mm-hmm. home, make a ham, do, you know, get the fixings, do what we need to do. And, I mean, what a great opportunity because the tickets, I mean, dirt cheap. Ten bucks a person, up to three kids for free. Three or four, I can't even recall, but at least three kids for free. No mm-hmm. cost. Uh, what better way to just hey I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the kids out for get the get them yeah. out of my wife's hair or get them out of my husband's hair whatever the situation may be we'll take them to a game for a little bit get let them get their energy out watching a new watching a whole new football league that's local to us we have eight teams might as well get into one of them right um, I bet I bet the uh, I bet the four o'clock Eastern three o'clock Central game will be one of the most popular because you are done with the church with the church festivities and the Easter festivities, mm-hmm. and then you can just kind of slide over there for that mid afternoon contest and then go back. Exactly to dinner. right. Exactly right. That actually might be the one that you might be looking for for most tickets. Mm-hmm. I would think. Mm-hmm. Could be speculation. Yeah, of course, speculation somewhat. zone. You know. <laughs> now the interesting thing, what I, my eyes are going to be on is the broadcasting too, because again, you have that triple header. And it's Easter starting the tradition, right? Because I, yep. I, I've, I've given my opinion plenty of times on this show. I feel like the USFL is built to last at minimum three years. I feel. I at least think we'll get to a season two. So you're kind of creating this tradition now. I guarantee people next yep. year are going to be talking about that, right? Oh, wow. We get the Easter Football games. Again, do we get a triple yeah, header again? I don't know. Maybe they split them up. I think that'll be based on what types of numbers we see. Now, what we could right. see is the later two games do really well in the ratings where maybe the first one suffers because of church or maybe even vice versa where during dinner time you kind of lose out on that traffic. But either way, it's a great A-B test for the for the league, the USFL. So next year, again, maybe they split up two games on Saturday, two games on Sunday, but now you know what are the optimal what are the optimal times to put them in based on the times from this year. And I think you're going to see a lot of that throughout season one. It's just little learning ex- experiments, if you will. Throwing things out there, exactly. seeing what happens, writing it down, and having as many notes as possible for, for that second year, third year, and please bring it fourth year planning, right? Exactly. I, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. And honestly, the experimentation continues because of the fact we hear, we're hearing more and more about the broadcasting for the league. You brought it up. You know, we, the broadcast we're paying attention to, I think, mostly because Fox is kind of straight up. They haven't said really direct, uh, directly, but it is a made for TV product first with the audience coming in as extra, which, by the way, I should add this note on here, too. It was confirmed today that all 50 U.S. states have some sort of attendance being represented in all the tickets. I know, isn't that amazing? So that means for those of you listening that are from Birmingham, you're going to be really having the eyes of the world not only visit you, but they will be on you for these broadcasts. Like, seriously, the city this week has been celebrating like crazy about this, and they really have started to show out. I mean, the mayor, <laughs> the, the mayor's office themselves even made USFL Day officially for April 16th for this launch. Like it is, it's truly a cool, it is a celebration of this league and truly a collaboration between a company and an entire city that wants to really take advantage of what they are making a deal with, mm-hmm. you know, just the, the amount of broadcasting talent available there and what we're going to be doing. Cause again, remember simulcast first time since 1967. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Uh, other innovations are we doing with these games. I'm going to just jump mm-hmm. right into this when yeah. we discuss, um, because we got a lot of sneak peeks. A lot of preseason. Yeah, they're film. not holding I, back. I, yeah, I mean, they were kind of, obviously, they they said that these were happening. People were trickling out that they were doing these preseasons. But what I what shocked me, I don't know if you feel the same way, but what shocked me is that they actually showed nuggets of these games. With commentary least, uh, and graphics and everything. Yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of expected to see videos of maybe some gameplay. Just maybe like a sideline camera. But yeah, we had... Yeah little bits and pieces of the broadcast package and they were showing off Fox knew exactly what they were doing. The USFL knew Mm -hmm. exactly what they were doing. They were showing off because some of this stuff is just plain cool, right? It is. 
I mean, it the is. first one on the uh, list, they, I'll let you name it off. You're the host this week, but that one blows me away. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's try and go. I don't want to rush yeah. through the whole list because no, I want we'll to stop and talk. I want to digest. Each. I want to digest it as best I can, because this will actually take a lot of it uh, leading up because like some of the stuff, like, for example, um, picks saving for spring stock, a lot of stuff for day of game. We're saving yeah. for spring stock. But this episode giving you a lot of things that you'll, you can expect come Saturday and into you know that triple header. So broadcasting two players, each team have a helmet cam. So if you saw maybe some photos, one was for the stallions. Um, there is essentially where the USFL logo is on the crown of your helmet. They're taking that, putting a, basically a GoPro into that area in the helmet. And you're going to be seeing at least sometimes with shots, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the plays most likely high, most likely high flying or scoring plays. Um, kind of curious what you think here, here, Stefan, because I was on with Tom Abraham on 97.7 actually earlier mm-hmm. today, and he was saying that I hope that it's used at a minimal level because of the fact that it could be disorienting how you watch it. And I kind of understood. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's a great angle. Just use it only in the certain situations that fit best. Don't overuse right. it is my advice. I think, well, here's what I think, and then I'll go into my opinion. So what I think yeah. is I don't I, – I don't want to say that it's not going to get overused, but I don't think it's going to be like a live play camera angle. I think it's going to be used at least mainly for replays. Right. That's what it's probably going to be used for. So yes, you're, you're going to see it, but you're not going to see it for like 30 seconds. You're going to see a clip of the guy running down in your normal angle. And then they flip to him throwing up, launching in the air, grabbing it one handed on the tip of his fingers and like a two second clip. Right. Or like, a bunch of dudes rushing up to the guy that scored the touchdown, like jumping up and hugging him, like a quick two, three mm-hmm. second thing. And in that case, in that utilization, if that is how it plays out, I'm signed up all the way. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't want to see it too. I wouldn't want to see it during live plays too much, at least. Um, not necessarily for the orientation value. If anything, the camera quality to me, Seems a little bit less than you would out of a, you know, I mean, clearly you, a broadcast camera is like huge. You can barely lift it and it's a little tiny camera. And my worry would be is if you have it on something like that too long, again, for those channel flippers, they might say, what, what is this? They wouldn't, might not even know it's football, (laughs) right? And keep clicking. Uh, But for a replay value, I think it's perfect. Or even like a recap at the end where they could maybe, here's the five best, you know, helmet cam views. And it's like, Number five, you need to do your clip. Number four, like that, all perfect. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to be overdone. I think it's a nice little touch, a little innovation. This is one thing, and I brought it up before that I love about spring leagues is they have the opportunity to test innovations without really making much of an impact. Whereas like the NFL, mm-hmm. they're so huge where if something fails, people are going to call them out on it. Whereas the USFL tries it. They don't like it in a year and don't, and they just end up not using it anymore. It's really not that big of a deal. Whereas if it works, it works. And then maybe it gets adopted and, and spread out. And I think this is one of those things we've seen who had it before. Was it world world football league had the helmet cam UFL? One of them. Had uh, it. Yes. That was someone brought that up when the, this was being dropped. Um, though they're, they're definitely, like I said, there are plenty of diehard fans that have followed these leagues for many a decades. Uh, so yeah, W the world league of American football that was, uh, has been said is the first one that used it in some capacity. Um, this one probably has a bit better technology, I imagine to utilize it properly. So, you know, Hey, more power, more power to the league. I'm glad, like I said, I'm, I'm curious to see how they, how they instrument this entire mm-hmm. thing. Cause like you got the, you got the helmet cams, uh, they're doing drones. Like we're actually like, we're having drones go around the field following players. I'll tell you one thing, you know, they've been pumping up their TikTok mm-hmm. accounts lately. One of the best ones that, that I've seen so far is it is a drone following a yeah. kickoff. It feels like you are watching the beginnings of a Madden mm-hmm. kickoff. It, it was very out of body, like kind of whoa we have come this far type of moment felt very video gamey i loved the feel i'm super excited about the drones i'll tell you this when the illness that we shall not name took place a couple years ago in 2020 uh, i got really into the drone racing league based off a recommendation yes uh, yes nbc airs that stuff yeah and it's super neat and the cool thing with the uh the drone racing league 
is they had a perfect switch over because they they built their own simulator that is like I guess one to one and it's super customizable where you can like add your own magnets and weight and it like and you can buy the, the real drone controllers for your PC. Mm-hmm. And so they continued the races by wearing VR goggles and playing the simulator. Whoa, and it's gnarly. Okay. It's, and I mean, these dudes, okay, then. I tried to, you know, me, I, tr- I, I could think I could do anything, right? So I got the drone simulator. No, I don't know how these dudes do it. Like you really, like I, that's when I realized if I buy a drone, I'm going to break a thousand dollars worth of my money or whatever a good drone costs. <laughs> right. You got, you bet. It's like, uh, those model jets. You got to be careful. You know, that is a, that is a, uh, investment. Yes. No, exactly. Right. Going up front there. That's an well, investment. I learned the wrong way as a young kid. I used to be into model boats. If that, if, oh, if, look at yeah, you. And I had a funny enough, a model Titanic and it is you you hang on a minute. you, are you uh, are you serious no, right now? Is this going to be a is it going to be a mild Titanic sank sank? It didn't thing? it didn't this hit an iceberg or a rock or anything, but it did sink. It okay. did sink. All right. And here's the trick: if anybody's into model boating, you can't back up too fast. You just can't back up too fast because the it brings the engine down, and then it floods oh, the boat okay. with the water, and it was too far in the lake. So somewhere in Lake Michigan. There's a model Titanic <laughs> floating around down there. And that's on me. I'm not, if you find it. I'm not hearing this right now. Send it. We got to get a P.O. box. <laughs> send it to the USFL oh podcast P.O. box. Or if anybody's found it in some weird off chance, if it floated ashore, and you're like, wow, that's funny. There's a model Titanic that sunk here. <laughs> Come comes full that, circle well and here's the thing i wanted to get a model plane but my that that's when my dad stopped me from the models we had the <laughs> rockets too did you ever get like the estes rockets yeah i well i had something like that um my grandfather let us do that one summer um we actually lost oh i rockets, lost so like most kind of-, of them i lost i got <laughs> you know here's the thing and again when i was a kid nowadays they probably have rock i don't even know if they still make them actually i don't know but when I was a kid, they had like this really cool one. They had a camera on it, but we're talking like mm-hmm. 1993 Zach, right? So it's like a black oh, and white so. grainy camera. And I shot it off once and it worked and we printed it out and it was really cool. Shot it up twice. And the wind, man, I don't even, I couldn't even speculate where that rocket landed. Cause it was like, it went up and it was just it, it, instantly. I knew I was never <laughs> seeing that rocket again. Cause it kind of went in an angle and the wind, it was the wind was carrying it more than I think the rocket was propelling itself. <laughs> right. It was like shoo, <laughs> sideways. I'm like, Oh, that's gone. So, so here's why this, this conversation <laughs> is definitely connecting it is connects here. So the drone, the drone pilots, I am really wanting to see how these guys operate under conditions. Now the preseason games practices, they've been tech testing this stuff to make it work. Right. Um, there have been mishaps. Uh, Jeff Bennett <laughs> actually tweeted out that he got hit by a drone <laughs> in practice. So, um, there are trial and error with these things, but I would think you're getting some of the best people on the oh, yeah. scene. Um, it is something to watch out for because these things are on there. Uh, some of our colleagues on our discord server, by the way, check out the pro football newsroom discord server. We do plenty of discussion and you get a lot of in-depth stuff right out of the gate on terms of news, uh, just from people that are very curious and dig. Um, here's the thing, the drones, if you don't have many people cheering, or if you are able to hear them, uh, apparently the propellers are extremely loud on the versions they use. Now credit that was in conditions with no Mm. crowd or little crowd because there was very minimal people allowed for the preseason games locally, but the crowd should hopefully drown that out. Otherwise something to keep an eye on, but the Mm. angles that's what has me fascinated. Fox, it's a lot about angles right now, including they're doing two sky cams. You know what's better than one sky cam? How about we put two sky cams in that bag? I know. Well, and the cool thing about it is it's not just two sky cams for the sake of two sky cams. You're getting that extra angle. So there's, it, from what I understand or what I've seen, it looks like you have a traditional mm-hmm. sky cam and then one that yep. sits over the goal line. And I mean, sign me up there. Now, already... And we've, we've only gone through three of these different items. That's three new 
camera angles. Three right. new camera angles to test. And again, maybe we don't see all three of these next year, but you don't know until you try. And you know what this is going to be perfect at, which there's, there's another one in the list that's going to help there too, but we'll get to that. But this is going to be perfect for that goal line drive. You're all pushing in. There's a, you know, big guys on both sides trying to push that quarterback through. The ball lands. Where was it? Now you have that right. perfect right over. You don't have to worry because, I mean, those angles are deceptive, Zach. I've watched the NFL, and I said, that's in. And then they show another angle. I said, oh, that is absolutely not yeah. in. I mean, right, right above, right. it's going to be hard to dispute that, right? Well, well think about it this, too, with the, with the sky with the sky cams. And, you know, it, it ties into our next point on broadcast innovation again, or at least things they're bringing over that are the best of the best. It helps the sky judge and the studio atmosphere, which they tested that mm -hmm. out, too. It is going to be essentially what you imagine, like NFL's New York Referee Center. But Mike Pereira and his team in L.A. are going to have wall to wall monitors of everything. And it was seen on the it was seen during some test footage that. You know, that is how the system works. You're going to be basically relaying info instantaneously. And if the sky judges work perfectly, they can stop action. If something egregious is, is incorrect or needs to be changed based on the officials mm -hmm. ruling, you know, these are still supposed to be some of the next cream of the crop officials, but bad calls still oh, yeah. happen or miss misread calls. I should also say that it's not always bad calls. Some stuff it's at, in the action. You can't fully well, get it. So that's what Here's this is the thing for. too, Zach. A ref can't be everywhere on the field at the same time. Yeah, there's more than one and ref. And that's what I'm saying. You, sometimes, I, I mean, everybody has their fault. You have to blink. Things mm -hmm. happen where it does get a little worse. Like, I've seen it in plenty of Lions games, Zach. Just guessing. Just guessing where the ball goes. Now I'm going to move this list right. around because I feel like this, this actually kind of fits into what we're talking about here. There's one thing beyond the sky judge, beyond the camera angles, we have all new first down technology that they're testing out Man, with the football. This one made waves, not only in all, in the USFL fandom, but in the NFL. The, this is the one that NFL people have been talking about like mm -hmm. crazy this week. And it's because some, it's actually kind of, it's kind of has a split community thought on it because yes, we still use in the NFL. A, what appears to be archaic in a way chain and lengths to determine the marker, which you would think, yeah, there should be a digital setup for it. But as we've seen with other people discuss, even uh, actually Ian Rappaport had a point on this in the Pat McAfee show this week credit. He missaid what league he was talking about, but he still was talking about the digital first down mm. technology and the chip in the ball. You know, the, you have, there's a factors like where's the knee down and things like that. That's going to be, Really, what I'm going to watch out for with how the USFL monitors this, are they just going to go straight with the ball marking? Right. Are they going to be able to override the system a little bit? These are things that they are venturing into. And on the NFL, if that is one thing they want to see experimented, this is the thing they're going to have their eyeballs on, I think, the most is how does this affect the foot? How does this affect right. the game? Because if they can find a way, if Fox and the, and the ref in the department for officiating with the USFL can figure this out correctly, that might be something you're looking at if the NFL thinks they can implement it in a fair, competitive way. The USFL is venturing with mm -hmm. this one. It, it is definitely something people want to see what happens. Oh, with. I'm excited to see how it really plays out. I mean, you brought up the big one that was kind of on my mind, right? Yes, you can see where the ball ultimately stops very easy, mm -hmm. but that only tells you a piece of the equation. So it is going to be where the knee drop. How does that all configure? Now, what would be really interesting to see? Now, this is not even speculation zone, this is in the future as technology gets even cooler, is using a similar technology in the knee pads. And I mean, Ooh, you yeah. can build some type of algorithm that could say, okay, I this is where the impact happened. This is when the knee dropped. This is where the ball was. Snapshot, send it to Sky Judge, send it to the refs, I don't know, surfaces or whatever, whatever they're using on the mm -hmm. sidelines. That's why I see this getting really cool, but you can't really get to that next step until you test this. And the great thing, Correct. as we mentioned, we already have three new angles 
a, a set of sky judges with a wall of video, and then you add in this technology, I, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to make a wrong call, at least on placement, at least on placement. Sure. And the, that's the, important. Hey, it'll be, it, it's mistakes you would think should be at a very minimum mm -hmm. with this system. Um, even with the chip in the ball, say you don't like the spot again, sky judge can overrule that. Like that's the reason they're there. They are there to correct a call and instantaneously in action, or if they need to go on the fly, uh, and it's supposed to speed up the game for, for release rulings and for, you know, video review, which is why these teams only have one, you know, they only have one review they can right. throw. They don't have the traditional up to three that you can get. It's only one right. and done. So that the, a lot of more is on the officiating this go around for this league than some other ones in the past. Uh, some other tidbits for the broadcasting, for example, halftime locker room broadcasting, at least, uh, going back in at halftime and seeing where the teams are at interviewing folks in the locker room. That's back. That was in the XFL 2.0 Fox obviously was very much at the forefront of doing this. They are jumping right back in. So, you know, that worked. Let's do it again because people really like that. I, I really like liked it. I felt that. there was a couple <laughs> times, honestly, with the XFL 2.0, I felt a little bad watching it. Do you remember mm -hmm. the, oh my God, well, I can't think of his name, the quarterback of the Guardians. Well, I remember him going into halftime. Not and coming out. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, let's just say that I think his fortunes changed after he badmouthed said, said coaching yeah. staff. So, I mean... <laughs> Let's be honest, 98% of the people watching it were like, oh, wow, this is fun. Me, I was like, oh, ma, ee, I felt a little bad. But, I mean, 98% of the time, it was, it's great. It's, I mean, you get an insight into something that you don't normally see, right? It, it's tasty social Oh, content. for sure. That's exactly for what sure. this is. For sure. And <laughs> you know Fox, Fox and NBC will be licking their chops for someone to say something and then go, yeah. what? No way. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to it to say the least. But the other one too that uh, that that they have here is the mic'd up players. Now again, this this is something that the uh, the NFL does and the XFL did. You had the number earlier when you joined Tom Abraham, though. But I was astounded mm -hmm. by the number of players that are going to be mic'd up. Sixteen. I said sixteen to eighteen on Tom on Tom's spot that I did with him today. Uh, I said, but it's 16 total players split between the two sides per game that they will have audio for. And I imagine this is a twofold reasoning because a, you want it for in broadcast, but B remember United by football is coming out with its first episode in terms of broadcasting for week one. If it's our mm -hmm. special on Saturday, right before the game, and they're going to, you know, darn well that. NFL films is going to use that in game audio for its later episodes. You they would know, be it. silly not that to. is their bread and that's their bread and butter for docs is people love that mm. stuff. The mic'd up segments for NFL, they are gravy for football fans. Oh. So this is, this just helps with the production for that, but it's great in because I, myself, I love hearing the quarterback call out plays. I love hearing the audibles. Mm. I love hearing some of the stuff on there. And even in terms of like the helmet cam video, they had a mic, they had the mic on that one to where you could hear like, uh, I believe one player was coming off one of the sidelines for the mm -hmm. bandits. And I don't know what coach it was. I couldn't make him out, but basically he's like, look, you gotta get some hustle. And like, you hear stuff right. like that. It's extra bits. Like what's going through the heads of these teams. People want to know that you don't always get that. So this is an, it's another element. Like it just want, it makes you want to invest more into what is going on with these folks well, on a weekend well, basis. Exactly. Right. And I'll tell you this, even when I'm a little down, there's a couple things I do. One is I watch Barry Sanders highlights. The other one, oh, the other go. one though, is Matt Stafford mic'd up in the greatest comeback ever. Yes. Where he gets it, his shoulder gets dislocated. He still, I mean, they wouldn't, nowadays, they wouldn't let him back in the game, I don't think. That's against Cleveland, yeah. right? And they, oh yeah. my God, I'm getting goosebumps. No joke, just thinking about it. And I, you know, you know, there's going to be a, at least a handful of, handful of plays like this in the USFL this season that, if anything, maybe they get put in United by football. Maybe they get pre and post coverage. But even just think about the hype that they'll be able to do for season two. And it seems like it, it isn't there yet, at least as of the time of recording. But we heard that a YouTube channel is coming for the USFL. Yeah, that was that was via their Discord, the, their official mm -hmm. one, by the way, uh, that they are going to have a YouTube channel. I'm assuming... 
at least by the neck by the week after that first weekend of action, they have that up with highlights. Because right now, the only one that's really been posting anything from the league in terms of video content is it what is called unofficial USFL, <laughs> which is run by I believe the folks over at USFL so. chat yeah, Discord. Yeah. Good people, so, too, by the way. Shout out, shout out to them for getting that cl- those stuff out there for people because not everyone uses Twitter or Facebook or anything. So YouTube is kind of the go-to. So I, I don't know. Shout out for at least sharing. Yeah. That. I'll give you, I'll I give mean, there that, ain't no shame know? in that game. If the, if the league doesn't have their own channel up there, it's not doing anybody any harm. Right. I mean, yeah. Pitchforks and fire. I, <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> well, the, hey, there are some people that are like, where is this YouTube channel? I'm like, look, uh, that's fair. I mean, they got, the, they, they've had, they've been still kind of in a mad dash. I'll, I'll admit, remember we were talking about less than a year that they had to get going. Like this was back in December when we first kind of get, got at least early goings mm-hmm. of this. And the mood around this has changed a lot. Like, it, like back at that time when we were talking about announcements, it's like, where are these people? They only have four, five ish months. Right. And I'm like, Hey, I mean, look at that time. I also was like, They'll, they'll get something, but yeah, I mean, it is crunch time. Look where they Dude, are now. <laughs> again, I always go back to this. At the, when we first started this show, beginning of the year, we talked about rapid fire of announcements. It's been like an automatic weapon this week. It has been boom, boom, <laughs> yes, multiple yes. announcements per day. And uh, shout out to you and James Larson, by the way, for keeping the ship afloat when I was traveling because I don't I, of, of course, I was like, okay, maybe it'll be a slow news day. The opposite. Everything dropped that day and that, oh, but you guys, you kept it up. We kept the traffic going. We're still alive. Man, but they have been ruthless with the news that they're dropping and the amounts of news they're dropping. And it's, from what I can tell, there's not an angry fan in sight at any of the bits. The things we just talked about, the broadcast innovations, the gameplay kind of sneak peeks. That's mm-hmm. just teasing the fans. Like this is what we're capable of. This is what you right. have to look forward to. And I think it's only going to get better from there. Right. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm, I'm, this is one. I'm happy to say that I did myself for USFL newsroom is we got to talk about broadcast crews because the big question. So it kind of came out around the same 24 ish hour span. So we had first off confirmed that Kevin Kugler C- and Mar- and then Mark Sanchez. So they're not just Kevin, but the broadcasting crew that they, that is shared for Fox NFL mm-hmm. Sunday for one of them, Mark Sanchez and Kevin Kugler, they're going to be out on scene for Fox broadcasts in terms of being the B team or the second mm-hmm. team for other broadcasting. Also Brock Hoor, Howard, you, you're asking the wrong person. I don't even know how to say my own name sometimes, but I would say, yeah, who are, or I don't know. He is going to be the sideline represent. He's going to be sideline reporting for these games. If you remember him, he was with XFL 2.0. Mm. Uh, we have a great little uh, emoji of his face on the do discord. We? we do. Oh my God. I don't yes. even know what's going to, you, you know, okay. You know, so, you know, the, uh, you know, the one that's the excited, face looks like Vince oh, McMahon. okay okay now i know that's exactly him. what you're talking about okay cool yeah that was his reaction uh that was his reaction during a uh roughnecks game i really hope he doesn't watch play. this show i'm sorry dude <laughs> 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 but yeah that but anyway anyway he was he did a solid job with xfl 2.0 so he's back so they brought a lot of guys back from the xfl mm-hmm. crew uh for nbc this one is all over the place they have like a bunch of people now credit they are doing the halftime production mm-hmm. and pregame production post game that was nbc's part of the deal when they signed a contract with fox fox does the games in terms of in-game production camera work and all that nbc handles a lot of the off-game duties back-end stuff at their studios so Here's the deal for the main teams. You have Jack Collinsworth and Paul Burmeister are going to be the play by plays. Um, not hundred percent, which is a and which is B credit. Jack Collinsworth was on the call for the pre for the preseason game for the Panthers and stars might be hinting. He's the mm-hmm. a not hundred percent. So I'm not going to confirm that speculation zone material right there. What is not speculation zone is the fact these two are your play by plays in terms of analysts. This is where it kind of gets interesting. Um, And this is split between the two broadcasts. You have Jason Garrett 
former Dallas Cowboys quarterback and head coach, along with uh, Giants offensive coordinator most recently. You have Michael Robinson, former Seattle Seahawks and San Francisco 49ers fullback, who's been on NFL Network, Big Ten Network. He's done a lot of stuff for them. And Cameron Jordan, who is right now a all, an all-pro, Pro Bowl defensive end for the New Orleans Saints. He also did some guest, he actually did some guest spot work in the XFL 2.0 days, uh, week five back that season. I believe that was for the uh, Rene- he was with the, it was Renegades broadcast. So I think it was Renegades and the uh, Guardians for that mm-hmm. broadcast at that time. Uh, he's also done a few other guest spots and has been doing things for NFL Network as well as variety other TV s- station bits. So uh, kind of all over the place. A lot of football experience for the colors doesn't shock me. Um, I'll I'll announce the rest after we talk about at least this main crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Garrett is one that he has. He's the least experienced mm-hmm. out of this, but. It is all, I always find fascinating when they put a former coach in the booth because either, because it could be a make or break. It can be, you can get guys like a John Madden is like legend right. status, which I mean, I'm not saying Garrett is like, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to full stop before I do that. Um, or you can get stale bread, like a Marvin Lewis in the Alliance of American right, football. Right, right. So this Garrett's the one that's like a complete wild card for me. Cameron is Jordan and Robinson. They have a lot of more energy. I've seen both of them. Um, Garrett though. That's the one that I'm I'm kind of looking and I'm like, all right. Same for Jack Collinsworth. This will be his, this will be the biggest spot play by play wise that he has had in NBC so far. I'll say this as long as because you just reminded me about a funny AAF story. As long as Jason Garrett doesn't do what Marvin Lewis did, do you do you recall what Marvin Lewis said on camera during like the oh, pregame show? Oh no. It was he did <sighs> they were I don't know, it was either going to commercial or coming back from commercial. And he, somebody said something and he said don't worry, nobody's watching this. <laughs> That's right. Yes. I was like, oh yes. no, I am, and I, I heard was, it. <laughs> I remember. Wh- I kind of remember where I was for that. That is such a look. I'm. I'm hoping Garrett doesn't. He ain't do anything gonna. Like I, that. Trust me. I think he's better I, than that. I have actually doing readings on him, like in terms of what his status was. There are a few people out there that make columns saying Garrett should go into mm-hmm. TV since he was let go from the Giants back in November. This is for stint. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, maybe a good sign. You know, I mean, I haven't heard anything bad in terms of personality wise. It's just like that, a good guy. You know, it's, it's just that it's a new venture right. for him. So I want to just see him in a broadcast setting. Uh, I, I remember with John Madden's uh, special, they did that Fox mm-hmm. produced funny enough. Uh, that was something Madden brought up. was like, you know, he was nervous and trying to fill things out, you know, cause coaches, this isn't their usual environment, but it's something he really grew into and enjoyed. So I kind of want to see how does Garrett react to a situation like this where, you know, you are analyzing the game. You just have to present it to a television audience in a proper mm-hmm. way. I, I, you know what? I think he's going to do well. I think he's going to do all right. I think he has. Really? I, I, okay. I think he's I mean, he, I don't know if he's going to be the best. I don't want to go that far, but I don't mm-hmm. think he's going to be. I don't think you're going to watch and say, "Ooh, wow. I don't know. They should have picked somebody else. Right. Um, and I realistically, see. you got to start somewhere. Right. And. This is exactly what these leagues are made for. This is going to give him some some time to season out. Now, what I do love, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, what I do love, I love it with former players, but especially with former coaches, is you really get, if they know how to verbalize it, a completely Mm -hmm. different aspect of the game, right? Breaking things down, breaking down the play, helping maybe the everyday or the casual football fan, rather, say, explain what they're actually seeing on both sides of the football. And I don't know. I think he could be really good at that. Uh, I mean, sure. The Cowboys didn't do the greatest under his tenure, but they're the Cowboys, bro. When have they been good? It's been like, and Oh my God, Daryl Johnston. I hope you're not watching this, but that was the last time (laughs) that was it. That is that is hilarious because of the fact that those two were on the similar roster or like in similar years yeah. together, you know, just different capacity because Garrett was the backup to Troy mm-hmm. Aikman. So, you know, that connection is kind of, I mean, credit, this is a, this is broadcast, but like they, they know each other. I mean, that's the thing. Um, I do, I, I, I do want to see how Garrett does. Cause I, again, I like the coach's perspective. I always like, uh, plus he, he's player and mm-hmm. coach. He has both aspects he can relate to. Uh, there's much more media material he can be exposed to and explain if he wants. Again, we're talking mic up pieces. We're talking a lot more camera angles. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot more stuff 
that you can relate to. Now, like Cameron Jordan, Michael Robinson, Michael Robinson, again, he's been through the scene for a while now. A lot of, he's been an analyst on many of other shows or done guest spots on other shows. Uh, he's been guest spot on the radio before as well. Uh, podcast, uh, podcast type of materials like pro T- football talk live. He's been on there. Um, so no stranger that funny enough, Paul Burmeister used to be also a co-host for pro football talk mm-hmm. live, but he has had plenty of high profile bits as play by play too. Um, plenty of NBC connection there. Of course, Cam Jordan also, I look forward to, but I think his energy is what I'm excited for. Cause the bits I've watched of him, he very much brings like a very upbeat, like this is, a, this is mm-hmm. incredible type of like vibe to what he analyzes. So I'm looking to see him get a little more bit of a serious role. I want to know how they split them up. That's one thing NBC didn't specify is who's going with who. Cause there's three analysts two play by play. So what I, so someone's going to be stuck with two analysts mm-hmm. in the booth is what's probably going to happen. Um, and you're going to get one person going with one. I'm going to venture. And this is my speculation zone on this, unless I can find something after mm-hmm. the show. Um, yeah. My venture right now is Robinson, because of his experience, he'll go with, I'm assuming either he'll go, I'm assuming he'll go with the mm-hmm. A team. That's my guess. Uh, Cause I can't guess which one's the A team. If I had to take a stab at it, I think Paul Burmeister, but Collinsworth is the up and comer. Right. So, you know, I can't fully designate that yet. I think whoever the B team is gets Cam Jordan and Jason mm-hmm. Garrett. That's my opinion. Could be wrong, but based on Robinson's years of experience in television, He's got a little bit more, so I'm going to give him the uh, seniority type of angle that gets him the A mm. spot. I don't know enough to speculate, so I'm going to agree with you. No curtains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what well, he I said. Could be de- no, look, I could be dead. I could be dead wrong, but again, there's nothing I've found that says what these teams ex- officially are mm. together. Like Fox, they specified right. like Kevin Kugler, Mark Sanchez. That is our B team. Like they didn't say with NBC who's right. with who. They just told you who the crew is overall. So you're going to find out on Saturday night who, well, actually you won't, you'll, <laughs> cause that's going to yeah. be a simulcast. So you'll get most likely, unless they do multiple broadcast crews, I would think you keep the same people across mm-hmm. the board. No, it's going to be, be so f- just, yeah, for, to clarify on that Saturday night, it's going to be the same on both. The simulcast is going to be exactly the same, same commentators produced by Fox. Even the, so ads, I'm going to assume Kurt Menefee. So it should be Kurt Menefee and Joel mm-hmm. Klatt. Yes. I, my understanding then. And then once we get into the splits come Sunday, Mm -hmm. Jack and Paul and the rest of the crew should be out there, which by the way, the rest of the crew for NBC. So you have Zora Stevenson. She does a lot of work for the Milwaukee bucks. She has a lot of other NBC properties. Same goes for Corey Robinson. He's done some hosting duties and other, uh, other anchor positions for NBC as well. And then Sarah Perlman is doing halftime post game coverage for NBC. She does plenty of other sports hosting duties at NBC. So this fits up right up her alley for it. So NBC has got all their stuff covered. We now know everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so no more secrets there. Full curtain was put peeled away earlier this week. NBC showed you who they got. Um, you know, into, like I said, I think a good mix of, I think some pro guys and some new mm-hmm. faces is what I'm looking forward to. You know, NBC, I think, or Fox, I think with a little more of the experienced crowd, but one that, you know, you can really, you can instantly relate mm-hmm. to people love Joe class. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're good. They'll be fine with that. You know, same goes funny enough. Mark Sanchez. I, I, that was one that surprised me. A lot of people really like Mark yeah. Sanchez as a color commentator. I'm, yeah, honestly, I don't know much of his work to be fair. Um, again, cause I, I don't think he's ever called the lions game. I don't see any reason why he would have been at anywhere near <laughs> any one of those, but so yeah, I'm excited to see kind of all these guys kind of get into the mix. Like I said, we know what to expect from Kurt Menefee, Joel Klatt right? It's going to be kind of that you get that experienced group, but like we kind of mentioned last week with uh, Jack Collinsworth, I'm really, I'm really excited to kind of watch him come in into kind of a bigger role. Uh, it, you know, is he going to be just like his father? Is he, is he even going to have his own spin on things? Right. (laughs) Does he do his own slide? Right. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Does he slide in? in I mean, he better, but (laughs) that would be fun. That'd be a funny nod. Oh, for sure. Because I'll be, I'll be frank. And I, and you know, you know, this too, he, he is like a carbon copy of his dad. Of like, I, I describe it as if you went back in time and met Chris back in the, like the eighties yeah. when he was in his prime, like all he did was his younger self traveled to the future. Yeah. And now the two just kind of coexist in the capacity. One renamed himself. Yep. Jack. <laughs> that, that's a, just, that's how you describe Jack Collinsworth. He sounds his mannerisms. He's just like mm-hmm. his dad. 
in every, at least in terms of visuals and the way he enunciates and kind of carries his, his own body language. He's just like, uh, I'm, that's what I'm saying for people that are flipping through the channels. If he's not on the screen, but you can hear him. Surely there's going to be a lot of people that just assume it's Chris Collinsworth. You're definitely going to stop and be like, why is Chris on right. TV? Exactly right, right. Exactly. Right. Is it the off season? Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it seems silly, but that might be enough to draw some folks in, you know, maybe now I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past it. So we, we talked about the broadcast, the commentators, the broadcast booths. Now, Zach, you know, just as good as I do. One of the questions that we've been getting almost daily for probably weeks now, at least since mm -hmm. the Fox NBC partnership has kind of come to light is how the flip can I watch the USFL out of the United States? We got right. it. We got it. And it sounds like it's yeah, a growing a list too. So if I, because here's the thing there, there's a USFL Brazil account, uh, account on Twitter who's, Mm -hmm. Please, USFL, hook this dude up. He is he wants it. He wants to see it. And I guarantee you, if you give him a broadcast, he'll get at least 10 to 100 other people to watch in Brazil. I don't know if that's enough. It probably isn't. But I need to do my part to help that guy out. I see his struggle every day. But the list is I growing, would, it says. I would love to, if that man... I would love to see like one of those things where he gets out there. Like no joke. I'll, I'll even put an anecdote like this last season of the arena football league. Um, there was a, a fan from mm. Italy that die hard arena football fan. They found a way to get this guy to arena bowl 32 in Albany, New York nice. that year. So like, that is the type of stuff I love hearing that stuff, you know, die hard, like a die hard international fan getting like his trip of a lifetime mm. would be pretty cool. You know, do you want now? Do you want to say how many countries are on this list so far? Or do you do you want no, me to say it? it's your it's show? A, it's it's your show this week. It's buddy. a number. I'm just making yeah. sure. Look, you started it off. There's a hundred. There is a hundred and one a hundo hundred and thirty countries worldwide will have four. Will have a spread out fourteen different games on a schedule. Mm. So the league is exposing you to the USFL. They are going to have it on air in some way, shape or form. And if you want that list, by the way, um, and this is again, why I stress getting on that discord that they have their official one, um, which we will try and again, if you, anyone asks in the comments, we'll mm -hmm. link it. Um, they have just dropped a, a Dropbox file of the entire list of like channels, you know, time, at least uh, places you can go see it for this 14 game international schedule. That also includes, by the way, playoffs, and the USFL championship mm -hmm. in Canton, Ohio. So people will get to watch that anywhere in the world. Even if you can't follow along regularly on the regular season, you are guaranteed you're going to get at least those three most important games this year that will decide who is crowned champion of this rebirth or at least renewed Fox version of this league. And for troops abroad, Armed Forces Network is going to be carrying all the games too. <laughs> or we'll carry yes. games. Yeah, I can't yeah. say all at least the, the 14 They'll be carrying game games. schedule. Yes. Now, which mm -hmm. uh, you love to see that, right? And here's what I hope, Zach, because we've seen it in the NFL. I want to see the troops watching the game. Like, show us oh. at the championship. The troops, I, I mean, they're all over the flipping world. Get us one, like, let's have a USFL troop party and get that on I'm, cam. I'm one, I think they get it done. I'll, I'll put it out there right now that they, they do at least one of those cutaways during the national anthem that they will get it done. And maybe it's even for Easter. Year. Maybe you get it for that first game, right? It's a, the that troops are celebrating, cool. have an Easter dinner, watch some football on the, on, on the network here, uh, American forces network. Sorry. I almost said armed mm. forces network and I knew that was wrong. <laughs> I knew that was wrong. Uh, but either way, I, you kind of love to see it. Now, this is one that a lot of people have been asking about as well as radio, we personally, in between us, we heard a bunch of different things in the background, but it seems like we finally yeah, we, got yeah. settled here. Sirius XM, so satellite radio, where it doesn't fail, man. You could go anywhere across the country and you're going to pick up a signal. They're carrying mm -hmm. audio broadcast domestically. So in the United States, and I believe it's every game. I believe all of the games of the season, including the playoffs and the championship. Uh, so again, People have been wondering, people, people have been asking nonstop about how do I watch it outside the country? 
but it, it's you know canada you're in there uk you're in there go click like you said like zach mentioned in the discord or if you want to, it's in the press release as well there's a link mm -hmm. and it'll tell you every country the networks that they're on and how to watch them so sign us up there right yeah yeah i mean look radio broadcast is essential for those on mm -hmm. the go so sirius xm is the largest radio platform that is available at least for subscription base for availability's sake as you're saying it's satellite radio it's it is damn near mm -hmm. impossible to knock that off well, unless something you know unless something catastrophic right. happens well, you, know? you know who loves football zach truck drivers you know well, who has yeah. sirius xm truck drivers every truck driver has satellite radio because then you don't have to fiddle with the stations as you're going through county lines and things like that so this is weird as it sounds could be another avenue to create a fan now my understanding of this is that uh it is supposed to be mostly the television audio that is going to be pumped through mm -hmm. this so if you're one, if you're one who's calling this, uh, you're going to hear Jack. You're going to, well, you're going to hear the games that are being mm -hmm. called, you know, whether it's NBC is being pumped through. Um, but it should come through Fox sports. If I am remembering this correctly for the serious channel. Mm -hmm. So that's the one you're going to want to have tuned in since there's a Fox broadcast that is kind of pushing it. So that's why it's going through there. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind if you're on the road. If you want to test out Sirius XM, I guess there's there's your chance. Sure. You know, um, I'm not advertising. We're not advertising the radio. We're just telling you that that is available. And we we had heard other options were being discussed. Mm -hmm. So like this this must have been worked in the background because we had heard other alternatives that may have been possibly happening uh, even just a week right, ago. Right, so right. yeah, they just got this finalized. Is what definitely it feels that way. Now just to even expand upon the locations because this is a blurb from the press release here. So. Here's what it says. It says the countries in which USFL games will be available, which is expected to grow, as we mentioned, include all North America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and all major English-speaking markets, so featuring Canada, UK, Ireland, South Africa, Australia. Now, I mean, that hits your big targets, right? That, that That's hits a lot. the major ones. You're getting, again, the audio broadcast or satellite, uh, so I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a radio option abroad but we're year one this is i would assume all of this expands and as it kind of mentions here it's expected to grow so right. worry not if you're in brazil or your country's not listed yet you're guaranteed there somebody's working on it i'll give you an, an actual an example that i have been asked about directly so uh did a guest spot with a good group of guys by the name of lay nfl blitz uh, that is their that is the show um they're based out of they're based out of Montreal, mm -hmm. which if you know, Montreal is part of Canada. It's actually a, the French, most the mostly French speaking quarter of Canada, um, had a great talk with that. And that was one of the main questions was what's the international broadcast mm -hmm. setup? Bingo. There's your, there's your thing. There is your nugget to find that. So people are curious, you know, and I, I actually got asked on the show about this. Like, are you surprised about the international, um, interest in and like, I'm not, I, and I, I honestly said this, you know, again, we, we pulled the curtain back and I was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't fully think about it at the time because two, two reasons. Um, one is that Fox has been marketing mostly in North America and two, it's the United States football mm -hmm. league. So, you know, and that, that's more of just assumptions on my end for the, at least in terms of the naming, but that's where it got me surprised. Plus, you know, CFL's of course, big in right, Canada. Right, right. So, you know, I was kind of taking that into accord, but you know, football's football people. like If people like football, they want to sure. watch it. So that, that kind of put me in perspective, like there's people around the country or around the world that, you know, they do ask and are interested in this XFL, other leagues, you know, so Fox is catering to those people that they'll reward them for these broadcasts and they can go towards the numbers for advertisers, for NBC, looking mm -hmm. at that deal. And if they are thinking if it's worth their money years down the road and all that, you know, it, it all adds into that. You know, exposure is exposure. Well, exactly on, right. Especially on a global scale. Exactly right. I mean, I was just kind of about to say that. Is that. More eyes is always a good thing. The more opportunities for somebody to stumble upon your product or know about it and have the opportunity to watch it in a legal way. Because I know there's mm -hmm. some unsavory ways that I'm sure people are going to use. But giving them the legal option, I mean, people are going to take it. People are going to use it. 
So I love to see that we kind of we have a big list to start with, and it sounds like we're going to be expanding through that. Now I would love to see you know season two more games of the season added to that international right. schedule, kind of build on it. I get it though. You you're building your audience here. Realistically, you know, if you put every game of the season on, some might not get very highly rated with the times of day that the games are going to be on, right? Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, one of our one of our buddies in the Discord in our Discord Pro Football mm -hmm. Newsroom. He's from yeah. Australia. He celebrated that he realized, oh my gosh, I can watch this in my home. Like that's someone instantly oh, right, right there that you know <laughs> go from down under that's going to be able to check out these games and talk with us about these too. You know whether it's tape delay or not at the same mm -hmm. time, we'll all get to have a nice conversation about that on a global range, which the beauty of the internet, am I right? Dude, the you know, at least a uh, web 2.0. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> you know, wait, and I'm that connectivity. Wait till that 3.0 baby. We're all yeah, about and a VR you, podcast. Well, and I'm letting you do the 3.0 bit of this conversation in a way. Cause uh, I, I need, look, I, I even asked you coming on. I don't know what a crypto wallet is. I don't know. I, I know some stuff about mm -hmm. NFTs and we know the USFL is doing NFTs. People have their opinions on it. That's fine. Truth is sports leagues are going that way. I'll even give you a nugget. The XFL is doing it yeah, too. Yeah. So it, it's not, it's not going away. Like this is just, it's part of the market and the system. I've come to just realize that myself mm -hmm. as I've said my own opinions on here. Um, but Stefan, the USFL is uh, getting that ball rolling. So what are they doing, man? What, what is the step in this process that they're kicking off this well, I weekend? think this is pretty neat, right? We talked about this, I think, last week, where I heard some rumors that they were going to have an NFT for, like, a game day pass situation. Now, here's the mm -hmm. sweet thing. The, 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 the USFL is trying to get you in the NFT game free. They're giving out 10,000 yeah. NFTs. Now, here's the real deal. All you need to do, it's easy, Zach. I did it earlier. You just okay. go to usfl.fans, and it asks you, like, three questions. Essentially, do you have a digital wallet or a crypto wallet? Does mm -hmm. it have an Ethernet address? What is that address? Okay. And that's it. And then once the claiming period's over, then they'll send you your NFT. Now, here's my advice, Zach. I gave you my advice before the show. I will reiterate it for anybody following now. What is a crypto wallet? There's plenty of them, but it's just like the wallet in your pocket, but it sits on your computer. A major one that a lot of people use is MetaMask. Doesn't matter. Yes, I've doesn't heard matter it. which wallet you use, whether it's a hard wallet, because I I'll tell you this, Zach, I have a hard wallet that I store my crypto okay. on. It's a it looks like a flash drive, but I mean nobody can steal my unless they steal that and know my passwords and stuff. I'm safe. Sure, sure. But here's what you must do for you, Zach, and anybody else on the internet. If you're creating a digital wallet, a crypto wallet, MetaMask, whatever, save your seed phrase. If you don't save okay. your seed, if you don't save the phrase, you're going to be having some bad days. See, I had hmm. to change that up at the end, but... Well, see, the, the rhyme's memorable. Yes. That, you know, that's one way, good ways of memory and keeping retention of something. I'll tell you, you will regret not saving that seed. I told you, Zach, this is a dumb story. Have you ever, have you ever heard of fun token, Zach? It sounds so silly to say. I, yeah, that, that's a no. <laughs> that's a no. Somehow, I don't even remember. This is from like 2015. I think I got an airdrop, like, I don't know, a ridiculous amount of fun token. And I, it was in my MetaMask wallet with a bunch of other garbage coins, as I'll use. I'll use that term for this podcast here. Other people might call it something with an S coin. I'll call it a garbage okay. coin. I just assumed <laughs> fun coins, garbage coin, whatever. But I always had it in my wallet, always had it in my wallet. Reforward and mad in my PC, Zach. Go to log into my meta, MetaMask. Guess what? Oh, no. I need your seed phrase to recover your wallet. Seed phrase, oh. no have -o, and $25,000 <laughs> of fun token, I no have -o either. What? Yeah. So save what? your seed phrase. And I'm not saying that oh, the USFL NFTs are going to be worth 20 k or anything like that. Trust me, though. One day. I know. Here's the thing, Zach. 
fun token when i got it was like zero 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 one percent of a penny right i probably okay. spent like maybe a hundred bucks on it probably like 10 zach probably like 10 because i'm trying to think of like the timeline of when i bought it that's how crazy crypto can be i don't want to give advice of when to buy or when you shouldn't buy but i think you should buy that's different than nfts though nfts are totally and when mm -hmm. i say crypto i'm talking about like bitcoin ethereum nfts are different they have their utility but from what i understand here is the usfl they're going full in on the nfts like i mentioned last week when i was at wrestlecon i spoke to a guy that was at south by southwest who heard daryl johnston talking about the usfl's okay. plans for nfts and they're going to have everything from the first kickoff first touchdown we already knew about you know the players and them getting an incentive and the coaches as well i kind of love to see this and what better way to kind of you're the perfect example zach I mean, I really am. you have nothing to lose <laughs> kind here. Of no, it doesn't cost you anything, but you get to learn about crypto and NFTs at the same time. Yes, that, that kind of is what I'm going to be. You've convinced me that I'm going to, I will take the free chance is what I'm going to do, because here's the deal. I'm, I've followed, I've followed there's some of the details with like Ethereum. I'm not even going to dive beyond just saying the word, because if I do that, that's just going to throw this way off track and there's no point in doing it. Nonetheless, just that currency that, that helps to fund some of these, that alone makes you go, okay, uh, the price for that is definitely a little up there. So yeah, the free pass, mm -hmm. which by the way, I'm just going to, while we're in this, so uh, this all is from the discord well, real quick, is real again. quick. Sorry. I do okay, want to deviate. I'll, I'll, I do want to deviate. I saw you. I saw you do some, a win. So I'm going to back well, because I I, you just say. to clarify, you, you don't need to buy a full Ethereum. You can go buy $5 worth of Ethereum. Uh, right. I just, okay. I, just yes. I don't, you're new into this. So you, you mentioned the price of Ethereum's high and yes, you are true. You are correct. But just. For, and even for the other people that don't know crypto, if you go to a Coinbase and want to buy Ethereum, you can buy, I don't know, as little as you want, but at minimum, I know you can buy $5 worth. Mm -hmm. Sorry, he, go on. See, see, he see he knows. <laughs> he, he He's my guy to go to for asking these questions. That's all I'm saying. Now, the Discord, again, um, they have a account that goes by Coach USFL, mm -hmm. who is starting to become kind of like, he's one of the community managers along with, uh, along with, Others by the name of uh, Dazadora and Hannah on there from the blockchain la from the blockchain mm -hmm. collective labs uh, or creative labs uh, that partnership they went through. Um, here's some nuggets on this. So uh, the fan pass, the that's the question. Your fan pass will be redeemable for a USFL team token NFT. These digital collectibles from the for the inaugural season of the USFL will unlock future football fandom. Uh, another question. Uh, I'm new to NFT, so this is me. Uh, why should I claim my free pass? So here's the de So he goes, more details will be revealed, but the USFL team tokens will give holders access to the following as of now. So unique behind the scenes access to players, coaches, and executives. So they're promising stuff, most likely uh, Discord, other content that is, as long as you're holding the pass, they'll send it. Um, here's the one I'm looking forward to while we're there, if I can find it exclusive on-site perks. And I just caught this as we were talking. So I had to repost it to go, all right, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they got. Cause after the show, screw it. I'll throw it in and I'll get my free one and we'll both have it and see what they got. Merchandise offers. I'm assuming discounts mm -hmm. are coming our way or maybe exclusive items and et cetera. Cause they're saying more is to come up, but this is the early goings. There's 10,000 free ones out there and apparently they'll be tradable. Once you, it's apparently you can claim the team and then they'll be tradable at a certain point mm -hmm. to where you can, I believe even sell them off into a market space or something mm -hmm. like that is the I idea. Mean, if I'm following how the NFTs are for other you spaces, can sell it. I, think. I mean, you, if there's a will, there's a way, trust me, you can sell it. Um, I don't plan on selling mine. Now the one, I think you kind of alluded to, to this too. The one that's piqued my interest the most is the on-site perks. Now, heard in speculation zone if you will i can't remember mm -hmm. where i heard this i can't re recall if this came from the nft faq on the usfl discord or if this came via my conversation with the guy that went to south by southwest but to my recollection i recall hearing something about even special access to different areas of the park so imagine like an inside mm. bar 
where you can go. Okay. You have the NFT. There's a smaller line in there. So, you know, you have a little bit, you, you can get your concessions, maybe get a drink without standing in the longer line. Um, sure. I think I heard something about discounts as well on the shop prior to this. And this kind of alludes to it with merchandise offers. All of that's cool. And I mean, you can't beat free. I always say it, Zach, if it's free, it's me. So sign me up here. And if anything, mm -hmm. here's the thing, Zach, what this is not their, this is not what they're trying to do, but this is going to get somebody into crypto. That's going to accidentally become a millionaire off of some garbage coin that I mentioned before, mm. because I mean, we've all seen the, the kids with the Bitcoin Lamborghinis and things like that. <laughs> they exist, Zach. Yes. They yes, absolutely they exist. And I mean, sign us up. I'm, I mean, you can't be free. I, I, of course I had to get it. Now I am looking forward oh, yeah. to seeing what the paid NFTs look like. And more importantly, on the cost too. I think True. if I were a gambling man, and I think I am sometimes, it'll be similar to the NBA top shot. And usually those are less than five bucks for a pack and you get like three or four cards in it. And then sometimes they have special packs that cost a little bit more and things like that. That's what gets me jived a little bit. Have you seen NBA Top Shots? I, I've seen a few. They're like video yeah. clips of this during the season. So that's, I mean, that's what I'm understanding. And what we understand is kind of what they're trying to go well, for. And beyond know? that, though, and this is where you really get the collectors like tied in. So let's say they make 500 of a card or an NFT, right? Or a card, whatever. Mm -hmm. It tells you which one it is, which one of the mint so you could strive to get right. like mint number one as opposed to mint number 500. I know. What and you're to saying. me, I don't know. It adds a little bit of an element, especially when you get into that trading community. Because let's say you have, you know, card number 418 of Tayamu, but you want to uh, and but you have a higher card of maybe a Kyle Laletta, but you're a Bandits fan. You might be able to leverage that and say, well, look, you still get a Tayamu. Uh, Mauler's fan, but if you give me your low Teamu, I'll give you my high Laletta, right? Mm, and then I see you could, going you on. could make some transactions there. It could get interesting, is all I'll say. Um, but so I'm looking forward to that as well. Just the little elements that aren't necessarily baked in. Right. My my final bit on this whole thing, and I'll tell you what they, they are the Discord the Discord uh, moderating team is listening to their fans because part of this announcement for the pet fan passes, and it's related to how the conversation went in this discord. Um, they originally were planning on doing exclusive team channels for the mm -hmm. NFTs. Um, if you monitored their main conversation, there were a lot of people asking why that was the case and kind of saying, you sure we can't just do this for free. Is there some other way we can do it? So sure enough, they heard feedback and this is quoted here on their, on their disc, on their post. Uh, they ask about, will this unlock or do I need an NFT to access discord ch dedicated channels for my favorite teams? They said, no, owning a USFL NFT will not, will unlock exclusive content. But after reviewing feedback from the community, we've decided to launch public team channels effective immediately. So they are mm -hmm. listening, you know, and I know that this kind of ties into look and I'm on this side of the angle. So I've talked about this. This is a polarizing ish topic. Like people do take heavy sides oh, on how yes, this goes do. still, you know, it, it might be still, it might be more and more getting ingrained into our businesses because again, football leagues are diving into this. I already hinted and did that whisper thing to you about which other one is doing it. That's a rival to this league, uh, is coming up, but those aren't going away. So, you know, at least I don't, I'm a guy just admitting it's not going away and I don't care for them. So they're doing, I think the right thing and saying, look, let's be pro con let's be pro consumer, pro fan. Let's do the team channels. No reason to gate them behind possibly having to have someone to pay mm -hmm. for it. You know? So that was something I'm like, look, great job on their part. They're listening to people. That's what you want to see. You know, fan engagement's got to be both well, for ways. sure. So that was for nice. Sure. Now, one other thing that was good to see, I think we touched everything on the NFTs, right? Yeah. Now, fan engagement, maybe, maybe not. But what's one thing we have not seen in spring football in forever? If ever. If ever. Get, oh, well, what no, we at. had them back in the old USFL, some. Mm -hmm. Mascots, baby. 
Yes. I, that's, again, my 2022 checklist. Knew the, uh, the U.S. Vel was coming. Did not expect mascots. It seems like, especially when you're, you're looking at the league, they're going lean and mean, lean and mean. And then, boom, week of kickoff. They surprise us. Not just one or two mascots either. Every team has Every a mascot. Team. I'm super jived about that. So the names, they're not, they'll be out probably the time that this podcast finishes, but they're mm-hmm. leaving it to the fans. That, that is, is cool. pretty neat. So every every team, they have a poll up on Twitter, at least at the time of recording. If you go there now, like I said, by the time this records, I think that's right when they're going to be dropping them online. Can we can we talk at least one? Uh, at least one that is. I already know which one. Clear cut. You, you do? Is it the All stars? Right. Well, I know which one I'm going to bring. So, hmm? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Let, let's just, so uh, we have to, just that one. Let's just talk this one because. I think most of the other ones were people were like, oh yeah, that, make, that makes sense. You know, sure. The, the breakers one, it, it, it looks like, you know, it's a wave. It's a, it's a water made wave right. guy. Looks like it looks a bit like toothpaste, but still cool. Um, we'll just go through the rest of the list. You have the, uh, you have the gamblers and the bandits that kind of share a similar cowboy vibe. Um, except the bandits is more of like a cover up uh, desperado type of look. Um, you got, for example, the Panthers, they got a Panther, the Stallions, they have a Stallion, the Generals, they have a General, uh, nice touch with the diversity right. angle, I'll admit, with the, uh, African-American, uh, General that is there. So that was, I thought it was kind of, did a you cool, see that on, uh, did you see, did you part? see my thing on Twitter where some lady started yelling uh, at me cause they weren't diverse enough. And then I didn't even say anything. And then she responded. She's like, Oh, never mind, That's better. <laughs> I just love that. What? She started yelling at the newsroom account. Be like, it's 2022. What are you guys doing? And it must not have been like that one must not have been released yet. And so the ones that would drop, all she said was, oh, that's better. Thanks. <laughs> just, I, I've been cracking up <laughs> all morning after those drops. Uh, yeah. So you got the, obviously you got the general, um, as we're talking, you get the mauler, which for me, I like it because it looks like Purdue Pete. If you <laughs> are a Purdue fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or it's very close in a way to, uh, steely mcbeam <laughs> over there in i'm sorry that was, that's such a goofy name but i love it over in pittsburgh um of course the theme is going to match that anyway mauler mm-hmm. steel worker they similar vein of work anyway um so you have that going in there too uh the stars were really the, the, the stars were the one that i think most people are like wait a minute what is this and um i think he's an alien i, I think that was the angle they're going Bro, for he's a star like uh well, he's blowing up. Okay, he's a star. red dwarf star. You think, I mean, okay, that's getting sciencey, but I think so. And the alien works. I like it. And maybe I'm weird. I saw everybody poo pooing well, on the old star boy. Well, here's, here's my take on it. it the, the Philly fanatic you. and gritty are these weird, awkward Philadelphia range. So they, I think that was what they went in with, you know, Honestly, the only ones I can think of that are kind of honestly the only one I can think of that's kind of a normal esque mascot in Philadelphia is for the mm-hmm. Eagles, and that's because right. it's an eagle. Um, but yeah, that's the only that's my only thing I can think is what they went like. Gritty's cool. Yeah, the Philly fanatics cool. Let's do like that, and then when they get to Philadelphia, they can interact mm-hmm. with each other in the spring markets because they're spring sports. Sure. And I'm like, all right, this is, this is fine, it's fine. This, but the only name we'll reveal is the one for the stars blob did they actually is that like just winning so it's lead, far it's leading by like two two thirds of the vote it. it's the blob Honestly, it might well i'm not gonna say where it sits in my list but we will tell you this saturday at Springstock, we're ranking we'll go through the rest we're ranking them all baby yeah. and what you know what maybe we'll even get some feedback that list that list might change throughout the afternoon because remember my boy Tron Hawkins, he's going to have some input. He might convince us to move some of these around. We got the USFL show. We got the end zone. We got a whole bunch of other guests coming as well. I'm curious to see. Now, what I'm going to love about that, Zach, is we're going to have kind of a crowd there that yes, might right. force us into doing something one way or the other. So that that's what I think is going to be interesting. So if you wanted to see the rankings for the mascot, tune in this Saturday. 12 p.m. Central here on YouTube, or if you're in Alabama, the party's in the pub. Join us at Todd English Pub at the Westin. 
right across the street from Protective. Right across the street from the parking lot, baby. In the pub. Getting mm. signed up nice and dry. <laughs> get some shepherd's pie. Drink oh, some you, ale and rye, baby. We're oh, having some oh. fun. Oh, the rhymes. <laughs> He's doing the rhymes. Boy, oh, boy. Go. I'm so go. ready for spring stock, but we're going to rank the mascots live at spring stock. I'm, I'm so curious to see the because we, we always see the fan interaction after we record it. We get the comments. We get the rankings. But I'm, I'm, maybe we do like a raise by hand. Do you agree with this pick? Maybe. Maybe we even have. Maybe that's it. Maybe this is. We always talk about being the definitive list. Mm-hmm. Maybe we put our judgments out there, gauge the crowd, and really get the definitive list. Well, that's kind of what yeah. I'm thinking. Like, I, we, I mean, that's, that's what I'm thinking is you, you get enough people that have seen this already. Or, you know, we just introduce them to them and get a straw poll right. vote type of thing right in right in todd english so that that might be the play but we are going to be ranking them on saturday we kind of we made that we made that swivel there because like mainly because look the names aren't fully decided and besides blob the rest of them were actually kind of close mm. so i can't we can't really jump like for example there's uh you got you got mall you got uh mike you got the mauler yeah mauler mike or marty the mm. mauler right now that are like tied in terms of vote so yeah, I got to wait on that. You know what I'm bummed yeah. about, Zach? They didn't pick my suggestion in for the Panthers. Oh. Dude, Party Panther? Come on, guys. Party yeah. Panther? Sign us up. Sign us up on Party <laughs> Panther. I want to recount. I know. I know that's never going to happen. But maybe it could. Put up the poll again, and trust me, Party Panther in the house. It's, I did this to the Roughnecks, too. I can't remember. what Their slogan was for the H. And I told him, I said, yes. dude, 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 guys, 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 rough them up, rough them up, just say rough them up. And I'll tell you this at every one of those games, you know, where we we're chanting, not for the H rough them up rough and go up. for three naturally. Well, yeah, go for three party course. Panther. I mean, we hope the, we hope the USFL, we see go for threes a lot, <laughs> at least as much as we can. Now, I do too. like Pablo. I think Pablo's funny for reasons that we shouldn't shouldn't mention on the show, but I think that's I think you know tongue in cheek kind of funny. The the internet's <laughs> undefeated. I'm telling you right now. They they selected some of these yeah. names and just went. You know what? We'll see what happens. Like screw it. You know, three or four options each. Sanity will play out eventually, yeah. right? <laughs> you know what? I love to see it. But hey, you know what? If the if the vote for the Panther just doesn't sit right. Party Panther, come on, second chance, <laughs> sign us up. Jesus. Well, before we get out of here, we had one last bit of n- a news that dropped. That kind of went under the radar. Uh, well, partially because it dropped during a other league's specific announcements mm. that we can mention on a different show at a different time. Um, and this is deals with more of the medical side for the USFL. So the USFL reached an agreement with Andrew Sports Medicine, um, or Andrew Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. Uh, which has a high reputation for its excellence in sports medicine and orthopedic patient care, research, education, prevention, and has been named a league medical provider for them. So uh, essentially more more of the high quality personnel that we've been expecting. You know, I, I, I did my best in the uh, solo episode to specify how much UAB and their medical department, A, is massive and has plenty of funding, um, and B, is a main reason why the USFL, one of the main reasons or pillars why the USFL went to Birmingham in the first place. Cause I didn't realize the state was, uh, apparently one of the medical like facility, like mm-hmm. top medical facility or community areas in the country, probably second country. only so, to Houston and uh, not to two Houston's horn, but Houston, it, I, that's the one thing I learned about Houston moving here is, I mean, they have like a, basically a city that is just hospitals and it's one of the leading cancer research areas and just like you, okay. I didn't realize that, yeah, Birmingham is very similar in that respect uh, in medical, maybe not so much towards cancer, but it, it, exactly in this field that the league would need. And I mean, what a match made in heaven. I mean, sure, the weather might be a little sporadic in the spring down in Beeham, but you got the facilities. You got cities and two different venue uh, groups working together, and now you have kind of what the state's known for, at least locally with the, the medical groups coming in. And uh, you mentioned yeah. this earlier. What is it? They're, they're essentially taking half of the staff on their hand for, for the USFL with their medical team. Is that correct? 
Yes, let me get the uh, let me double check double back to you on here because I want to make sure we are getting this accurate on the show while we're discussing. I will read off while I'm getting this clear, getting res- just kind of mm-hmm. organized here because Edward Hartman had some quotes, uh, the executive vice president of business operations for the USFL on this. Um, so first off quote, Andrew sports medicine is one of the premier medical service providers in the country. And we're fortunate to have their team support the health and well-being of our players and quote for the first one, another quote, quote, during our preseason physicals, the physicians and staff at Andrew sports medicine d- demonstrated that they truly care about their patients. So having our relationship cover in season care makes perfect sense. So uh, high praise coming out of them so for I have this. the details here, and I apologize for mm-hmm. not having them earlier. So here, here, I get, this is directly from the press release. As a leader in the industry, Andrew Sports Medicine brings decades of experience to the league and will staff half of USFL clinic hours, which offers players an opportunity to receive routine medical attention. So there essentially go. half of the hours are going to be taken care of by this group. And, I mean, as they mentioned, they're the leaders. They're kind of the top guys around there. That's going to help the players, right? Well, that's good. That's good to know since we're actually, at least as of uh, yesterday, no mm-hmm. joke, late Wednesday night, we had an actual player's injury report yeah. in our inboxes. Yeah. And that rose my eyebrows. I'm like, whoa, um, okay. So now we're getting real serious because this is, I mean, that also affects like sports betting and things like that. So, you know, that's going to be coming up, hopefully on the regular now. I don't know how late each one mm-hmm. will drop. But they are sending them out to news pundits and those associated that this is what practice reports were looking like. Like we're talking like limited in mm-hmm. practice, full participation, did not participate designations, like all the stuff you expect in the mm-hmm. NFL. We're hearing that. So uh, these guys, along with, of course, UAB, they're going to be responsible for helping these folks uh, get rehabilitated and get ready for their game time and uh, setting up. So looking forward to that. Glad that they're, you know, that the league is re- is investing heavily, of course, into the medical aspects. I mean, any football league should, but it's great when you get to see more and more releases of like high quality, talented people and personnel that are working alongside a professional league like this. Uh, and it reassures that the players are being treated right as well, which fans definitely have their say on that issue. I mean, we can go back to the hotels for crying loud if we really want to, like they do affect how, how the leagues oh, sure. look at these issues as well. So good moves here by the league. Happy it's to good. See it's it. quality. Right. It's keeping the people safe, mm-hmm. keeping them healthy. And I mean, that's one thing we've talked about with spring leagues. It's always important. Bring in that safety. And while this is going to maybe not on the field, but after something happens on the field, there's a lot of things that doctors can do to make sure that the injury gets better and not worse. Right. Beyond beyond fixing it, but advice. And you have some of these top talents in there giving the players advice. This is going to make sure that they continue to play the game and maybe not end up in a in a season or God forbid, a uh, career ending injury, right? So right. I love to see it. The professionalism, good. The USFL is going top tier on a lot of things here. Like I said, if before the beginning of the year, there was a lot of concerned folks online. Where's the news? What's happening? How are they going to bring this all together? What we're seeing, seemingly, is we're getting the rapid fire of announcements, but a lot of these things have been in motion since even August or June of last year, right? Somewhere even in the summer. And some have added in as we've gotten closer, sure. Maybe this one recently got finalized, sure. But mascot sack. You think they made mascots in the last week? Hell no, they didn't. That, ma- I mean. That takes that, time and, des- and design choices. Yeah, I mean, so there's, seeing all of these things, kind of as they roll out, we heard, the rapid fire of announcements, and we heard it was going to be a slow build to like to, to the big event. And we're getting to the big event, Zach. Like, I can't, <clears throat> I cannot mm. believe it that we're, when this drops, one day away from we, when we get to watch the New Jersey Generals take on the Birmingham Stallions live in Birmingham. I don't care if there's a tornado. They will. They'll, they'll delay the game. But if they sure. don't, I'll be watch. I'll be riding that whirlwind, watching some spring football, just spinning around, be like, get, you know, <laughs> sign me up. I'm ready to go, rain or shine. We're gonna be there. I will say this: I'm gonna try to buy. What is it? A poncho? Uh, what are the plastic? 
It yeah, is a poncho. Sign us up. You, you said it right. You said Good. it right. I never know with me. So anyway, I will probably try to find those Friday when we land for us because I'm sure they sell them at Walmart there. They sell them at Walmart here. Just like, you know, a, right. not an expensive one, but one that we're not soaking, soaking wet because I'm not missing the action, Zach. I'm not missing that no, first not game. not at all. And let the football gods come out. Overtime, first game. Overtime, mm-hmm. first game. I want to see it. I don't think we'll get it, but I want get, to see it. Get that, get that going. I, I'll, I'll add on this as we end the show. I know that it's forecast is, of course, showing we're going to have rain and we had to move our event. The good thing, the main thing that makes me happy, and I got this sent while you're recording, forecast is saying the rain's letting up by game Very time. good. Very good. And I'm hoping I am crossing every finger I can that it stays that way because as much as I know our tailgate, we really wanted to have this outdoors. Mm -hmm. I want that game to be as crystal clear for fans to come out as possible because the league as much, they've been hyping week one up like crazy. They probably too are going, please, for the love of God, don't be a weather event that makes this affect a crowd possibly or the style of play. The crowd, this would be a great, the crowd. I think I know the crowd's yeah, you say it. You I think the it. crowd is important, yes, but I think it's less important. The bigger thing to me, my big concern wasn't even about the presentation of the gameplay or the crowd, is the game getting delayed week one. Everybody knows April 16th, April 16th, 6.30, April 16th, 6.30 simulcast. And if you have to move that, it's not going to be the end of the world, but someone's going to talk moving, about it. Someone's going to bring it up. Network- Moving two networks and having to reschedule that would be a living hell in my in mm-hmm. my eyes. Now, there's ways you can do it, I bet, or you just go, you know, you reluctantly go Psy, Fox will air it, and, mm-hmm. you know, NBC still has our deal. But, no, I mean, that's not – doesn't look like a possibility. This is uh, one of the local weather channels, uh, WBRC News down out in Birmingham. They're reporting as of today that by 6 o'clock Central Time, it's only a 20% chance of rain with partly cloudy – by nine o'clock in game, no yeah. rain at all. So you're you're probably getting sprinkles mm-hmm. at the most, and that is that's the best I can take out of what I've seen oh, for in this sure. weekend's forecast. I it was, and that. it's been going back and forth. We've been. I feel like a meteorologist after this week because I've been watching. I was <laughs> checking weather.com. We were looking at all the local ones, trying to compare Fox weather for the new equipment they installed. I mean, as I've well. been all over the place on that, but yes, we got it settled. And you know what's cool though? Now once we finish up. I'm sure you saw Outkick's going to be having a tailgate party starting at 4.30. Mm-hmm. So for anybody, once you're done watching us at Springstock, you have more content. And you know what's on after the Outkick tailgate? United by football leading right, right into the game. I mean, from 12 p.m. Central till the end of that first game, there's solid USFL coverage at the event and online. I mean, we'll be at a, we'll be, we'll probably be tearing down at that point, but I mean, I can bet you we'll be watching. Oh that. yeah. <laughs> you know, right across the street. I, I bet you we'll be watching that before we go. Oh, absolutely. Well, I figure we tear down, we get the stuff at the Airbnb and then we go tailgate with the fans. I, I think we, there you go. Honestly, I think we can get it done in less than 30 minutes. Our Airbnb is just like a couple minutes down the road. Now, mm-hmm. if it's raining ferociously, I'll probably, uh, I'm not going to discuss this on air because this is how we get robbed. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. Let's 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 play that. Let's play that by ear. <laughs> let's do that. I'll let's, be driving a uh, Buick Lesabre with the license plate. This with thousands of dollars of equipment in it. I don't really have a Buick Lesabre. I'm joking, by the way. But we trust you. All. We trust you all. But we still want to hold that one back. <laughs> As I was saying, I was like, "What am I doing? Why would I say this?" We're taking it to the Airbnb, which is hours away. <laughs> it's oh, hours. God. We're nowhere near the building. T- totally. Totally. We're, we're all the way down in mobile. We're yeah. in mobile. We're, we're down at the, at the Gulf coast. You can catch us there. We'll drive up. I'm waiting to meet the fans. Folks. I'm waiting. You know what else we got to do too, for the Sunday game. And I'm going to do this after, mm-hmm. after we wrap up here, I'm printing out the picture for Bruno Reagan, right? Oh yes. Now, we haven't had enough time to meet, but I have a funnier plan in my mind. We're going to the sideline Sunday, mm-hmm. and after the game, we're going to go. Because he's usually he's out there signing autographs, at least with the, with the Battle Hawks. I have a feeling he'll do it here. 
And if he's watching, I'm sorry, I'm ruining the surprise. But what I really want to see is the authentic reaction of him thinking he's going to sign something, which he is, and getting getting that picture of him holding the sign of, I've talked a lot of trash about the USFL, but I'm probably going to play for them. So that's, I, we got to get that on camera, Zach. We're going to have, uh, we have plenty of cameras and things like that to record. Comedy gold. So hopefully, hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be able to share that on episode 16 of the USFL podcast. Big week, though. Man. Big week ahead of us. Man, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be something to enjoy, and I can't, I, well, the recap will be legendary for that one, too. And again, 15th episode dropping 15th of April. It's, it's, it's just, it's all coming together. It's all, it's all magically coming Stars together. Stars are aligned. Absolutely. And not just the Philadelphia well, Stars blob. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, look, I got to have fun. With that. <laughs> <laughs> but, folks, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for the support through 15 episodes. All the fo- following to subscribers on the show, just the fandom we've had and uh, the praise we've received. Um, we're forever, forever grateful for that. And we'll, de- we're definitely going to keep on trucking and giving you as best content as we can, as we've been doing, because it's been a fun ride and it's only just getting started. I haven't gotten in the games. Like that's the thing. It's just getting started. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're listening and checking out for this for the first time, be sure to subscribe to our channel or, you know, subscribe on our podcast platforms, click the bell. It builds morale. As we always like to say, thank God that Stefan's drain has drilled that one <laughs> into my brain to never forget anymore. Uh, also by the way, and we met references cause 5,000 subs were giving away a Jersey from our friends at Royal retros, by the way, who will be at again with our spring stock tailgate slash pub, you know, <laughs> extravaganza at this point as we will call it so 5,000 subs will give that away just giving you a heads up also if you want to check out royal retros our our sponsor for or our partner for this podcast 15 percent 10 15 percent off your order 10 percent 10 percent yes yes i was i was mixing up 10 percent off your order if you use usfl podcast when you check out on any of your items they do a great job with a bunch of retro gear including og xfl at least material that you can find uh i got a great general's shirt that i'm going to be bringing with me to uh spring stock so uh yeah packing that bad boy up once we are done talking here and uh follow us on social usfl podcast on facebook instagram and twitter you know if you want to follow us along there. very active on at least mm-hmm. two of them so two out of three ain't bad <laughs> No, I ain't bad at all. We we got we remember we got busy nine to fives. Yeah. <laughs> we got to deal with too. And, until next one, guys, check us out for our live stream of our spring stock tailgate. If you're on the YouTube channel too, by the way, hit yourself hit the reminder for that, and you'll be able to instantly get that thirty minute reminder before we start. Um, and that starts at noon Central Time, one o'clock Eastern Saturday. And that'll run for four hours, noon Central to four Central before the game. We hope to hear from you in the chat or see you there in person. For my bu- for my friend and my co-host, Stefan Raychuk, I am Zach Heilman saying thank you very much. We'll catch you at Springstock or on the stream. Enjoy the inaugural weekend. It's going to be a thrill ride.